My first day in a chemistry lab in college, my lab partner showed up wearing the wrong type of lab coat. Can you guess what he did wrong? And are you doing the same thing? I'll get to that in a second. I collected data from over 500 chemists on what makes the perfect lab coat. In this video, I'll share three key features so you know exactly what to look for when you're buying your next lab coat. And at the end, I'll share one lab coat I think ticks all the boxes and is the best lab coat out there for general chemistry labs. So in that college chemistry lab, my lab partner was originally asked to leave and he was gonna get a zero for the day until the instructor found an extra lab coat in the storage closet. But the only problem was he was a small and the lab coat was a 3XL. So my lab partner ended up getting lucky and he was able to stay that day, but I was just laughing at him the whole time and so was the whole chemistry lab class because he looked like a little kid playing dress up. So don't let this happen to you. Here are the three key things that you need to know when buying a chemistry lab coat. The number one most important thing is the material the lab coat's made out of. If you don't get this one right, you can get kicked out of lab. So what do you need? If it's the wrong material, it's actually a big safety issue. And no matter what I say, you have to check with your lab instructor to see what they require because it can be different in every lab. So most general chemistry labs require 100% cotton lab coats. And the alternative is polyester. And so they want cotton because even though cotton does burn, it burns slowly and it lets you get the lab coat off in time so that you don't get seriously injured. Polyester, on the other hand, will actually melt to your skin and it can trap you inside. And so when you're working with Bunsen burners or exothermic reactions, that becomes really Really dangerous. Now polyester does have a place. It makes an excellent fluid barrier. So if you're doing things like uh, biological fluids and you're not around heat or flame, sometimes polyester is the best choice. Other good candidates are FR treated cotton or Nomex and those are really good for flame resistance too. But usually those are pretty expensive and they need special care and a lot of times overkill for a general chemistry lab. And if that's not enough detailed information for you, I actually wrote an entire detailed blog post about every lab coat material you can find and you can check that out right here. Another Number two is buttons versus snaps. Remember how I said you might catch on fire and need to take your lab coat off really fast? Well, those plastic threaded buttons can actually melt and they take a lot of time to get off. If you're in a hurry to get to lunch, you might have been trying to fiddle with them and get them off quickly and it, it kind of takes a while. So imagine if you're on fire and you have five plastic buttons to try to take off, good luck. Now, the better alternative to plastic buttons are actually metal snaps, which is what this lab coat has. So metal snaps, if you're on fire, number one, they won't melt. And number two, you can get them off real fast without even touching them. You literally just rip it open. Now, they're a little bit more expensive than uh, plastic buttons are, but in our data, chemists preferred metal snaps over plastic buttons three to one. Now, one last tip on metal snaps is try to avoid the white painted ones. They have a painted coating that chips off really easily and over time it'll wear down and it'll just look really bad. Now, the third thing to look for is the cuffs. So, you know on your puffy winter coat, you might have the, the knit cuffs at the end of the sleeve and it hugs your wrist and it keeps the cold air and snow out. Well, they have those for lab coats too and they're called stretchy knit cuffs or elastic knit cuffs. And you won't get kicked out of lab if you don't have these, but they work so much better that I have to recommend them and try to find a lab coat with these if you can. Now, the reason for this is if you get just the regular straight cuffs that don't have any elastic at the end, when you're working at a chemistry bench and you reach forward to get chemicals or the waste bin, you can easily drip acid straight onto your skin and you can get acid burns. And I know several people that this has happened to before. And the other thing you might not think about is those straight cuffs, they hang down from your wrist by a couple inches. And so when you're working around graduated cylinders full of chemicals, it's really easy to accidentally knock over glassware and it spills the chemicals everywhere, which is a safety issue. It could spill it onto you perhaps. And also you just have to spend the next 15 minutes cleaning that up and your work goes out the window that day. Now with the stretchy knit cuffs, it hugs your wrist really tightly and you're not nearly as clumsy when you're working around all these chemicals. And in our data from those 500 chemists, chemists were four times more likely to prefer the stretchy knit cuffs over the regular straight cuffs. Okay, here's a fourth bonus tip. And this one is optional, but I want you to think about it. So in the United States, this type a collar is really popular for lab coats. Now, this was okay in the 1950s because it was all, you know, middle-aged men wearing lab coats and they had shirts and ties underneath uh, that went all the way up to here. And so they were actually protected even though their shirt might get dirty more easily. But you're probably not wearing a shirt and tie into your lab every day. I don't think I ever have. Now, if you're wearing a V-neck or a t-shirt like this, you've got a lot of exposed skin here. And if you have an exploding waste container, for instance, in the back of a fume cabinet, it can knock out the glass and that glass has a line of sight straight to your jugular. Now the safest type of collar you can get is a closed collar, almost like a chef's collar, and it's usually called the Howie style. And it looks a little something like this. So this type of collar closes all the way at the top, goes most of the way around your neck and gives you that extra protection. And these can be a little hard to find, especially in the United States. And some people actually still prefer the lapel collar, which is why we made this lab coat do both. 
So you're probably wondering, where do I find lab coats that have all these features? Well, the good news is we collected a list of our favorite lab coats from other companies that are available right now for sale, and you can find that link in the description below. And if you want this awesome lab coat, which was designed with feedback from over a thousand scientists, go to geniuslabgear.com LCP and leave your email to be on the list to be notified when it's available and when we have new releases. We'll also post updates on YouTube right here, so subscribe and follow along so you get updated every time we post a new video.